Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. Here at Dentistry, I make videos on dentistry and dental related topics. If you find these videos useful, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. So today we will be talking about the stages of tooth preparation. So stay tuned. So the stages of tooth preparation are the initial stages of tooth preparation and the final stages of tooth preparation. So first let's see the initial tooth preparation. It involves the outline form and initial depth, the primary resistance form, the primary retention form and the convenience form. So first let's see the outline form and the initial depth. So the first step in the initial tooth preparation is determining the outline form and establishing the initial depth. So what happens in this stage is we create an outline of our final preparation. So establishing an outline form means placing the preparation margins in the positions that they will occupy in the final preparation. So we decide the margins of the final finished preparation in this step. But the finishing of the enamel walls and the margins is not done in this step. So the advantage of this step is you get an idea of the outline form before you start cutting and this prevents the overextension of the preparations. And the preparation of an initial depth is of 0.2 to 0.8 mm into the dentine. The greater depth that is 0.8 mm is for the extension on the root surface. Otherwise the depth in dentine is not to exceed 0.2 to 0.5 mm. The three general principles for outline form is all friable and weakened enamel should be removed, all faults should be included and all the margins should be placed in a way that the good finishing of the margins of restorations can be done. The friable enamel is the demineralized enamel that needs to be removed because the bonding agent is not as effective and the unsupported enamel, the undermined enamel needs to be removed because there is no underlying dentine to support it. So these types of enamel should be removed. Now the next stage of initial tooth preparation is the primary resistance form. It is the shape and placement of the preparation walls that best enable the restoration and the tooth to withstand without fracture the masticatory forces that are delivered along the long axis of the tooth. So the prevention of the tooth or restoration fracture is what we call as the primary resistance form. So the prevention of the tooth or restoration both from the occlusal forces is the resistance. So the principles of resistance form is that the floors that is the gingival floor and the pulpal floor should be horizontal and flat in order to best withstand the occlusal forces. Then restricting the buccolingual extensions of the external walls to allow strong cusp and bridge areas to remain with sufficient dentine support. If the extension of the preparation is more than half the distance from the primary groove to cusp tip, we need to consider capping the cusp. But our main aim is to preserve the cusps and the marginal ridges. Then the rounded internal line angles. So the third principle is rounded internal line angles. Because the sharp line angles act as the areas of stress concentration. So what are the features for the primary resistance form? The flat floor, box shape, inclusion of the weakened tooth structure and preservation of cusps and the marginal ridges of the teeth and also reduction of the cusp for capping whenever indicated. The next step that is the step 3 of the initial tooth preparation is the primary retention form. The retention means prevention of displacement. So prevention of displacement of restorative material. Right. So what are the features for the primary retention form? The convergent walls. This is the first feature. So by this we mean that the walls of the preparations are slightly converging towards each other so that they lock the restorative material and prevents its dislodgement occlusally. So as you go occlusally 
the walls converge towards each other and dislocates the restorative material and prevents its dislodgement occlusally so this is the feature that prevents the restorative material to get dislodged okay now the next feature for the retention form is the dovetail preparation the dovetail preparation prevents proximal displacement for example this is the dovetail so you can see here the restorative material will get locked because of this this kind of preparation and this will prevent the dislodgement of material in this direction so the material won't get dislodged in this direction so the dovetail prevents the proximal displacement so now if you are using the composite we can rely on the bonding agent but for the amalgam these retentive features are very essential now the last step that is the fourth step for the initial tooth preparation stage is the convenience form it means improve access and visibility as needed so it is an extension of the preparation in order to provide ease of visibility accessibility and ease of operation in preparation and restoration of the tooth so these were the initial stages of the tooth preparation now let's move on to the final stages of tooth preparation so this final stages of tooth preparation involves removal of any remaining enamel pit or fissures infected dentine or old restorative materials if indicated pulp protection if indicated secondary resistance and retention form finishing the external walls of the tooth preparation and finally the cleaning inspecting and desensitizing so first let's see the removal of any remaining enamel pit surfaces infected dentine or old restorative materials so you might be wondering what about the caries that are deeper inside the tooth because we saw in the initial preparation only an initial depth of 0.2 to 0.5 mm is being established so what about the caries that are deeper to that so this step is where we deal with it so if the initial preparation remove all the caries this step is skipped but for the deeper caries we need this step and the objective is to remove all the infected dentine or the pit or fissure or any kind of old restorative materials if there is any the next step is the pulp protection if indicated to protect the pulp and aid the pulpal recovery if indicated for deep excavation approximating the pulp we have to consider indirect pulp capping with some base material and if there is a pinpoint exposure of less than 1 mm plus it is asymptomatic then we should consider direct pulp capping with liners and bases now liners is the term used for volatile aqueous suspensions or dispersions of zinc oxide or calcium hydroxide or rmgi that can be applied to tooth surface in a relatively thin film liners may provide the barrier that protects the dentine from the noxious agents from either the restorations or from the oral fluids then initial electrical insulations then some thermal protection also and pulpal treatment that is stimulation of formation of tertiary reparative dentine when in contact with the pulpal tissue so the commonly used liner is calcium hydroxide what we call a dical calcium hydroxide liners must be considered with resin modified glass isomers now this was about liners now bases so bases are commonly the cements that are used in a thicker dimension beneath the permanent restorations to provide for mechanical chemical and thermal protection for the pulp so example of bases are zinc phosphate zinc polycarboxylate and resin modified glass isomer which is most common now bases are used under the metal restorations under the liners to prevent the dissolution of liners over the time then thermal protection and to distribute local stress across all the underlying dentine now the next thing is varnish now varnish is a solution liner that was used earlier to seal the dentinal tubules and two coats of varnish are applied on the prepared tooth surface for the amalgam restorations the varnish helps prevent micro leakage 
so it prevents the micro leakage of the bacteria reduce post op sensitivity by reducing infiltration of fluids or salivary components at the margins of the newly placed restorations and varnish is used as a barrier that helps to reduce the pulpal irritation but the film thickness of the varnish is thin and is therefore insufficient to provide any thermal insulation tooth varnishes are not used under the composite because the solvent in the varnish could react with or soften the resin component in the composite and adversely affecting its polymerization nowadays sealers are used so sealers are used under non bonded restorations so the approach for the sealers is to occlude or seal the dentinal tubules and the amalgam restorations are sealed with gluma desensitizers so the basic concept of what material is to be used is based upon the remaining dentine thickness that is how far are we from the pulp so for amalgam if the remaining dentine thickness is more than or equal to 2 mm then sealers are used if it is between 0.5 to 2 mm then base along with the sealers are used and if it is less than 0.5 mm then liners are used with base and sealers now after all the infected dentine and enamel pit and fissures old restorative materials are removed and pulp protection has been done additional retention and resistance features may be introduced so now the secondary retention and resistance form are of two types these are the mechanical preparations and the treatment of the preparation walls now the mechanical preparation features are the retentive grooves pins and slots skirts so retentive grooves are vertically oriented used for additional retention for the proximal portions of the conventional tooth preparation and horizontal retentive grooves are prepared in mostly class 3 and 5 preparations for amalgam preparation then beveled enamel margins are also used this provides more surface area and roughness for the enamel bonding with the composite then pins and slots the pins are used when vertical wall is missing and self threaded pins are can be used and this improves the resistance and retention form then placements of the skirts increases the resistance form significantly by enveloping the tooth and resisting the fracture of the remaining tooth from the occlusal forces and treatment of the preparation walls or uh, with the etching or priming and adhesive material also improves the resistance and retention forms in cases of composite restorations now the next step is finishing of the external walls of the tooth preparation establishing design and smoothness of the cavo surface margin so the objective is to create an optimal marginal junction between the restorative material and the tooth structure and afford smooth marginal junction now the last step is the cleaning inspecting and desensitizing by cleaning we mean removal of any visible debris with water and then removal of the excess moisture with air syringe but not to dehydrate the tooth by overuse of the air as this may damage the odontoblasts associated with the desiccated tubules and then inspecting and desensitizing to limit the post operative sensitivity So that is all about the stages of the tooth preparation. You can also check our other video about the GV Black classification of the cavity preparation and the terminologies of the tooth preparation on our channel. I hope you like this video and if you do please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to share it with your friends to make their life easier as well and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Also any kind of feedback is highly appreciated. Also if you have any queries or questions you can ask me on my Instagram handle the link for which is there in the description down below so see you until next time thank you